All right, let's start with chapter five, which is marketing analytics. And we will cover four learning objectives. First, explain how marketers increase long-term success and profit by practicing customer relationship management. Second, understand big data, data mining, and how marketers can put these technologies to good use. Describe what marketing analytics include and how organizations can leverage both marketing analytics and predictive analytics to improve marketing performance. And objective number four, identify how organizations can use marketing metrics to measure performance and achieve marketing control. In this uh, first video, we will cover objectives 5.1 and 5.2. And let's recall that in chapter four, we talk about the marketing information system. If you remember, that's uh, a system that stores and analyzes data from a variety of sources and turns that data into information for useful marketing decision making. So customer relationship management, this concept draws on that uh, use of information because CRM involves the systematic tracking of consumers' preferences and behaviors over time in order to tailor individualized value propositions. In other words, using that information from marketing information systems and the different sources that we discussed in chapter four in order to, to adapt offerings, communications, and interactions to specific needs and wants of customers. So CRM allows firms to get um, more close and personal um, to implement a customer orientation approach and capture information on customers based on the so-called touch points. These touch points, of course, uh, are those moments in which there is any interface between customers and companies. So whenever you go online and browse a website of a firm or a brand, that is a touch point. Uh, whenever you call over the phone to a 1-800 number or you check your account, uh, through the phone uh, in a bank, for example, though that's a touch point. It's an opportunity of uh, interaction. And obviously, face-to-face -face physical um, interactions when you go to a store, to an establishment. So how can marketers use the information from all these touch points? Well, that's what we will go over today. And in order to do this, uh, we need to understand the rationale of engaging in a customer relationship management approach. This has to do with the one-to-one -one marketing. One more time, this has to do with trying to see customers more individually to tailor and adjust your marketing offers to them rather than just providing an undifferentiated treatment or communication message to everybody. So the steps for one-to-one -one marketing include identifying customers first, right? You have to identify who your customers are and get to know them in as much detail as possible, as much as you can. Once that you have that information of who your customers are, the second step is to differentiate this, this, this is connected to the concept of segmentation, right? Segmentation, which uh, of course is fundamental for marketing. Um, you have to differentiate customers in terms of their different needs and therefore how they represent different value to the company in relation to how, how, how much, to what extent you can fulfill and satisfy those expectations and therefore provide value for both. Um, number three, 
have to interact with the customers and find ways to improve cost efficiency and the effectiveness of this interaction. So if you're able to identify, differentiate your customers, then you can interact in more efficient manners so that your resources are not oriented uh, to unprofitable customers or customers that you simply cannot serve because they have different needs at once. So you optimize your interaction. And finally, um, do customize and actually change and tailor your communication, your product offerings, etc. In, in, in terms of what these customers want. Now, in order to implement the, the CRM approach, um, remember that we talk also uh, in, in a previous chapter when we talk about different levels of planning, when we discuss marketing planning, we highlighted that in order for marketing activities and strategies to be monitored, you have to have marketing metrics and in the same way for customer relationship management strategies you have to utilize certain metrics that are focused on the customer now for this crm concept there are three critical metrics that we should look at and these are the the share of customer, the customer lifetime value, CLV, which we also discussed previously in the semester, and last but not least, customer prioritization. What do we mean by share of customer? Share of customer is the percentage of a given customer purchases in a category over time. So let's not confuse this with market share, right? That's a concept that we looked at um, before when we analyzed the Boston Consulting Group's matrix. Remember the portfolio matrix in which you have different product categories depending on the growth of the market and also depending on the market share that the company has. But that's a separate, that's a different um, concept. Here we, when we talk about share of customers, we mean how many products of, a, of the same brand you own, for example, uh, electronic devices. So if you have three or four electronic devices, how many of these are Apple products, for example, or Samsung? or Toshiba, right? In the textbook, you have an example with tennis shoes. And if you can have customers who purchase more of your product, more of your tennis shoes, out of three or four tennis shoes pairs, you have customers with two um, pairs of shoes of your brand, therefore, you have a high share of customers, and that's one metric that tells you uh, about the loyalty, of course, of products, uh, sorry, about the loyalty of consumers toward your products. And you can direct your marketing efforts towards those customers for them to increase um, the, the number of items of your brand versus targeting non-customers versus trying to acquire new, new consumers to, to, to try your brand, which of course is, is costly. So one way of implementing the CRM concept and measuring its success is through looking at share of customer. Another is the, the customer equity and lifetime value. Remember, lifetime value uh, is how much profit a firm expects that will make on, on customers. This is a, a, a concept that was 
early adopted and developed by Domino's Pizza, was one of the first companies who that started using this lifetime value co concept by calculating or estimating how many pizzas a single customer would buy over the years in the future. So by having this estimation, you can then take into account monetary investments to acquire and maintain these customers. So what, what marketing efforts you need to uh, implement and how much money um, and, and budget you need to implement in order to make these relations longer, right? By keeping customers loyal, satisfied, they will not only um, continue generating revenue, but they, they will also um, generate uh, positive uh, word of mouth and recommendation, which is another byproduct of um, keeping customers loyal, right? And this is based on the, on the fact that it is easier and less expensive to keep a current customer than to acquire a new one. It is much easier and convenient, um, financially speaking, to, to serve an existing customer satisfy over time than trying to get new customers because that requires, one more time, a lot of um, dollars to, to bring them in and try your product. And number three, customer prioritization. Um, what, what we refer to with this customer prioritization is that implementing a customer relationship management approach allows to differentiate customers and give priority to those which are more valuable in terms of their business. Uh, I think banking, uh, firms are a good example of this in terms of they distinguish or they segment we could say also their customers in terms of which customers have more money in their accounts which customers generate more benefits to them financially speaking which ones use more their credit card which ones do not um, use their credit cards and therefore are not generating um, money through interests, which customers are not paying their debts or, or whatever they own to the bank and therefore are not customers that are profitable. So um, this is another benefit of having a CRM mindset approach, right? Because by knowing this information, you can make better decisions about which products to offer, which special offers to give, or discounts, or premiums, or simply decide which communication channels or vehicles to use, right? Should you use uh, online communications to reach them, or traditional media like newspapers and uh, TV, etc.? Well, these are things that allow you uh, to, to, to make better decisions. Now, what we see more clearly in the, in the recent years is that as more customers shift into using um, information technologies, there is a greater amount of data available to marketers. And, and therefore there is a bunch of information out there and it continues to grow every day because people use digital technologies uh, more and more to, to do their everyday activities, to purchase for products, to, to search information about products, mm, to communicate with others through social media, etc. So we have what we call big data. This is a term to describe the exponential growth, the exponential growth of 
both structured and unstructured data. We will see the difference between structured and unstructured data. But basically, we have <clears throat> terabytes of information about consumers' um, behavior and their patterns or their activities and what they do, what they like, what they don't like. And this requires a specialized analysis, right? Because um, we are dealing here with quantitative skills that are necessary to properly analyze this uh, tremendous amount of information. So if you are interested in, in going into um, data analytics and, and marketing oriented to, to the analysis of big data, you require uh, a training in, in statistics, right? Or some advanced degrees, sometimes requiring PhD level um, qualifications. But of course, the rewards are also high in terms of salary. These are this is one of the areas in marketing for which you have higher uh, wages and, and salaries uh, because precisely because it's not something easy that anybody can do that everybody can do and and it's a very uh, useful application is 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 a uh, a profession that benefits businesses because it provides insights how to be more profitable so it's of course a valuable um, career there those of you who may be interested in pursuing a career like that in your textbook you have uh, some applications of what type of benefits companies can get by utilizing big data uh, insights. You have there um, this example of House of Cards, this series that, uh, well, we, 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 we know now that Kevin Spacey is not going to be there anymore, but um, how this TV show was developed as a product for commercializing and, and uh, as a product for the public, how it was developed by using insights from, from analysis of big data uh, based on consumers' preferences. Uh, I recommend you go to this link and watch a video. This is a TED talk um, from a uh, statistician, a data analyst to uh, that explains how they um, utilize data to develop House of Cards uh, as a product. So I'm not going to make you watch it now, but go to the Blackboard file where you have this uh, chapter slides and just click on this link and I'm sure it will be um, it will be interesting for you to to listen to to this story now uh, three major areas in which big data can provide competitive advantages through the application of this information into decision making is identifying opportunities for business right maybe there are some needs or desires there that consumers have and there are no companies or brands fulfilling them and maybe you could go into into that um, segment of consumers and profit from it there are improvements in products right or or, or, or insight that can help um, create better products like the house of cards example and or simply delivering timely information more efficiently and effectively right uh, what are the sources of big data you have social media corporate it government and non-government organizations 
commercial entities and partners. Mostly we, we focus on social media because um, that's where lots of information is being generated now. People spend hours on social media um, as compared to other activities or other, other um, media channels like conventional television channels or reading newspapers etc. So that's why social media um, has has become a a very important source for information, right? So it has become um, predominant. And, and, and some ways to analyze data and collect data from social media interactions is through web scraping, right? Uh, or scrapping, sorry. Web scrapping, what it does basically is these are software tools that allow to, um, to, to explore and, and, and collect the information that, that users leave on social media, right? All the interactions, all the posts, all, all the likes and, and, and comments and videos, etc. All that is something that of course is subject to to being collected and analyzed. Brand mapping, that's another um, way to, to utilize the information generated in social media together with sentiment analysis in order to learn and find out what is the position that our brand or our product holds in the perception of consumers, right? How is our product or, bar or brand positioned based on what, on what people say on social media, based on the conversation going on in Twitter or Facebook what is, or, or Instagram? What, what is the way that our brand is positioned there? And here you have an example of a brand association map by Nielsen Company about Nike. And maybe if you cannot distinguish clearly here what the different terms and, and associations are, you have them in, in your textbook. Um, and this is something that you find in page 135. And it tells you well for Nike based on the analysis of consumers conversation online, they determine or they find out that there are certain concepts that are more prominent in, in relation to Nike, right? Such as the categories they are mm, being perceived as dominating like shoes, right? Sneakers, etc. The competitors, which you see on red um, dots here, who are the main competitors that people perceive are um, the other options for consumers. Adidas, Converse, Reebok, etc. Other, other adjectives related to, to the brand, like cool, awesome, etc. So these are uh, these are different tools that are used in terms of um, technological uh, approaches to use to, to, to learn about the brand, right? And to generate data for, for analysis. The other sources are uh, corporate IT. What do we mean by this? Uh, let's go back. Remember last chapter the marketing information system, one of the sources of information for the marketing information system was internal data, right? Data that you have within the company. And in the same way, for, for purposes of big data um, analysis, you have information within your own um, records, within your own historical data that you have through uh, customer relationship management databases, in the analysis of, of 
um, of online information that you do, if you have uh, accounting or enterprise resource planning systems, databases, so all your purchases, um, all your sales, the database of customers, etc. You have that there and that may provide data for um, decision making. You, you can get information, one more time, not only from internal sources, but from external sources. Information published by the government, for example, like US Census data, data from the um, economic entities, which is also a census that is um, implemented by US government. It's not for free, maybe, but, but th that's the information that is there and you can acquire or non-governmental organizations as well. Other commercial entities that are not government, not NGOs, um, you have credit card companies, for example, that sell the information of their uh, account holders, right? To They sell this to other organizations in order to know about the demographic characteristics and the type of purchases that these bank customers have. Supermarkets or other retailers, online retailers, they have also information about what are the purchasing patterns and habits of, uh, of their customers. Or when you are in a, in a distribution channel, when you are part of a distribution channel or a supply chain, management system, you are, uh, for example, a supplier, let's say, of a uh, supermarket chain, well, you can have a partnership in which both parties share information, right, of their sales, of their customers, in order to, one more time, to get insights for better decision making. The, the challenge is, once that you have the information, the challenge is, well, how you analyze and process this information. One more time, as I said earlier, this requires some analytics, quantitative, statistical skills and training that um, allow you to do what is called da data mining. Data mining is the process by which analysts sift through big data to identify patterns. One more time, these are not just uh, the information of 100 or 200 or 1,000 customers. These are millions of customers. For example, imagine if you were to, <clears throat> of course, we're talking about large corporation like Target, right? And you have the database uh, with information of consumers who purchase online through the target website. Well, that is millions and millions of um, data points, the way it is called. And so it is not something that can be done just easily, but you require certain tools for identifying big patterns. Because one more time, what you're looking is not individual information of course you try to, to 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 see as close as possible to information and obtain uh, uh, insights to personalize your marketing strategies but overall as a source of information you you want to look at um, larger relationships between data right like correlations for example a correlation between certain brands that people buy versus a demographic variable like their age. The older the consumer, the more they have preference for this type of product, for example. Now, what we have found is that um, not all the information is, is quantitative. You have, yes, you have information in a database like the date in which somebody purchased something, a time in which that person went to the store, 
uh, demographic information, etc. That is called structured data. That is information that is ordered and you can arrange. If you process the information, you can put it in numbers, right? How many purchases you've made? What What is the average price of a certain product being sold, etc. But you have unstructured data also. And this is not quantitative data. This is not necessarily something that you can put or interpret in numbers so you have comments and posts posts that are part of conversations on social media right so people say something about a brand people express their uh, beliefs or their attitudes towards a particular brand and how do you put it into a number well that's not easy so this is more qualitative information, right? And this type of information still can be useful. So although data analysts have traditionally focused on structured data, right? Which is easier to, to, to access and analyze quantitatively, there is, uh, th th there is a need to to look at unstructured data also because it may be more difficult but potentially it's more valuable because people express their opinions and their feelings about why they don't like your brand why they don't like your product and it is critical to understand those reasons and there are technologies that have been developed to 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 capture those insights from qualitative or non-structured data. Usually this is through text, but it could be also through voice, right? Here I am showing you um, this link that again, you can see when you, when you download these slides from Blackboard, you can go to this specific slide and see how this um, company Dialogue Tech. This is a company that provides services to business and organization to to analyze data, including structure and non uh, unstructured. So, for example, in this link of the of their website, they they tell about different problems that they can help uh, solve in businesses by using their technological resources. Of course, they, they charge you for that, but they say, well, if you have a problem, for example, a problem, let's see this, problem number three, high customer churn. So if you have a problem where you, you find out that you have a lot of customer um, leaving your company, they are not staying with you, they are, they are not being retained with you, and you find out that this is uh, something that happens after they call your 1-800 number, after they contact your call center over the phone, then you can do an analysis of the, of the phone calls, right? And this is where they say, well, a solution for this could be do a sentiment analysis right so analyzing um the sentiment of each color based on what is said on the call so you have to actually listen well they have of course machines and robots to do this um but they try to catch words and interpret the content of the call in order to provide a numerical value so they, they at some point they have to to interpret this in some quantitative form in order to understand what is the issue what is going on wrong with the telephone call that there is a high customer churn churn rate right so things like this can be done also with text with conversations online, right, with text. So 
Mm, it is critical for marketers and will will be even more in the near future to to get the appropriate data and identify patterns and relationships in order to uh, to make better decisions. Um, finally, uh, before concluding objective 5.2, 5, 5 um, what are the, the common uses of or applications of data mining? Well, we have, of course, consumer acquisition, which is which customers I can mm, convert into um, into customers of my business. Which consumers out there, right? That that's that's that the, the 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 correct definition. Which customers who are out there uh, purchasing from other stores from other brands, but not me. How can I acquire them? and make them my customers, make them my customers. And this is done, for example, by identifying the profile of consumers that are currently your own consumers, right? In terms of demographic profile, what is what are their age ranges? What is their ethnicity? What is their education level? Where they, where, where they live, etc. And if these are the customers that are good customers uh, with me, then I can target potential uh, clients from uh, uh, out there with marketing communications to attract them with me, right? So if I know the profile of my current customers and I am fine with that and the, I'm satisfied with these customers, I can find out out there customers with the same profile. So I will target those who have the same demographic profile, age, income, ethnicity, um, education level, etc. Because I know already that they are profitable customers. Another application of the um, use of data mining is customer retention and loyalty. So this is focus on our existing customers, right? What can we do in order to maintain these customers loyal and uh, remaining with us? Can we give some special treatment, some special offer, some extra something in our products or services to keep them loyal? Because this is this is based uh, on the assumption that that these are loyal customers already, right? And that it is valuable. It is valuable to to keep them with you. They are good business, right? Um, this goes back to the earlier concept we we uh, look at earlier in this same chapter about customer prioritization. You have to give priority to some customers versus others. Because there may be some customers that you don't want to keep for long, that they are not interested, uh, you are not interested in, in, in serving as other customers. So this is the so-called uh, customer abandonment uh, purpose, right? So you may want to use data uh, analysis in order to find out which customers you don't want to serve, which is called firing a customer. Some banks will say, well, I, I, I don't want to continue serving the customer. Of course, they, will, they are not going to tell you from one day to the other, I don't, I don't want your business anymore, but they will simply not put much of attention or emphasis or target you with um, with promotions or benefits for for you to stay. They will simply let you stay or leave. And 
the so-called market basket analysis, which is something that, again, going back to this example of banks and credit cards, um, they know which uh, products you buy more with your credit card. They know how much, and they actually send you a report. Uh, some banks send you a report every year about how much of the purchases you made with your credit card, how much, what percentage was for um, food and beverages, what percentage was for education, for travel, for uh, clothing, etc. So that is an analysis that not only helps you as a as a card holder to, to, to control your finance, but to them and to whoever they sell your information so that so that they know which products you are more interested in and, and probably send you offers and marketing communications and and emails and promotions about that product about that category of product because they know you you like that right or they can target based on information they know about you what is um what products you are more likely to purchase based on your historical on your historic um, um, behavior with them so i'm going to stop here at this part and and we will move later with marketing analytics but we will stop here in objective 5.2